Hello you lovely lot and welcome to another video. My name's Katie and today we're going to have a nice gentle look at different types of white ink as well as different ways to apply it. It's not a review as such, it's not a comparison, it's just me doing some pictures using white ink. And it's also going to be quite a long video so I suggest you have a glass or a cup of your favourite beverage so you can enjoy this experience more. Anyway, let's get on with the video, shall we? Now, you would have noticed at the beginning of this drawing, I held up the Stuart Semple white ink. I did a review on this a little while back, so if you want to see a bit more of an in-depth video there, I shall leave a link either in the description, the comments, or at the end of this video if I feel like it. The paper I'm using is the Spectrum Noir black paper. I won it in a scroller box giveaway at the start of the year and this paper is the gift that keeps giving. Honestly, I love making sketchbooks and I thought I would have a black paper sketchbook for this very subject. Now, I found the best way to apply this white ink and I would say that throughout all of the bottled inks that I use is with a brush and ever so slightly watered down. I think all of the featured bottled inks in this video are perfect for touching up mistakes whether you've used markers, maybe even coloured pencils, as well as adding highlights for watercolours. However, for something a little more intricate like what I'm doing on these pieces, I do recommend just adding a smidgen of water in there, not too much to dilute that opacity that we want, but just enough to get it flowing on the brush. I did try and use it with a glass dip pen, but it was just having none of it. It was too thick and even in its watered down state, it wasn't performing great. So pretty much all of these are done with a brush. I do recommend having a few brushes on hand for different levels of detail, I guess, more than anything. And obviously we're working in reverse here rather than drawing all the line details where shadows would be on a white paper drawing with black ink. We're flipping it around and concentrating mostly on those highlights. And I kind of like to liken it as raising the image out of the paper rather than carving into it. I know that probably doesn't make much sense, but I felt the need to tell you guys just how the brain operates when I'm doing some art there. Most of the brushes I use here are just your typical round brushes. The one I'm using at the moment was featured in the July scroll box and I absolutely love that brush and it just seemed perfect for this. It had a nice good point on it as well as it having good snap to it. This isn't the kind of drawing or painting, I guess, where I'd want washes of colour, it is literally all about adding line details and textures through that way. For extra fine details, I'm definitely going to recommend a rigor brush. You don't want it too thin because this paint is, even in its diluted stage, a little bit globular and again, that pretty much applies to all of the white bottled inks that I feature on here. I kind of like the consistency where it flows just quick enough to get those line details down in that one stroke rather than having big globs on the page which are unsightly especially when you're wanting to get fine lines down there. One of the advantages to using a bottled ink and again this goes across the brands is that you can change the dilution level. Now obviously I've had to do that to improve the flow of the ink there but again though you are sort of changing the tone at the same time. I really do advise that if you're going to dilute to tonal values that you mix the white ink with your water on a black piece of paper. And the reason I say specifically a paper rather than a black palette, for example, I mean, can you even get them? But anyway, I digress. The reason I say on a piece of paper is you want to see how it's going to dry before you add it to your piece. The next ink that I'm featuring is the Kurataki ink, same people who do the Ganzai Kurataki paints, as well as a few other paints and supplies I've featured on this channel. And again, the same applies with the mixing ratios there and using it on a black piece of paper. I found with all of the inks where I use this brush technique, the paper kind of got darker because it was wet and it kind of deceived how light things would come out once they dried. And we've all been there with watercolours, even acrylics when you've watered them down or any other ink medium. Sometimes 
how it looks in the pan, how it looks on the brush, isn't necessarily how it's going to look once it's dried on the paper. So, as always, do a bit of a test swatch before you actually apply it to your main medium. Another bit of advice I can also offer here is you're going to have to, to a certain extent, work quite quickly. Especially in the summer months, in the summer that we've had, it's been very hot and obviously your wet mediums dry a lot quicker in the summer months. Oh goodness, I cannot wait for winter. I found it to be a little bit problematic at times whilst doing these paintings. I do like to, I suppose, knock out a few quick ones, but then sometimes I do like to take my time with them. However, the temperature does not always allow us to have that luxury. So again, if you're mixing, especially on your paper, I know it kind of contradicts what I said, but it is the best surface to work on to see how your ink's going to dry. But you are going to have to go quickly and do areas of your painting or your drawing in little batches. So I would spend a few seconds here and there on this hair's ear, for example. And then once the paint had run out on the brush, I would see if I could replicate that same tone. But if not, I would put that to use on a different area. Now, the reason I decided to do this video, well, there's a couple of reasons, really. First of all, I haven't worked like this for quite a while and I, I just wanted to. I think for me, I really do enjoy doing a lot of line based work where you add textures in there. Don't get me wrong, I love painting in watercolours and in gouache and I love using all the other mediums that I feature on this channel. But for me, adding lots of tiny little details, whether it's pattern based or if it's replicating fur, for example, like we have on this hair here. <laughs> I said fur and hair in the same sentence. Oh dear. But yes, for me, adding these textures, for me anyway, is how I see an image emerge from the page. For me, this is my most relaxing way of doing art. With lots of practice and I have years of doing these kinds of techniques where it's just all been line detailed. It becomes quite cathartic and very relaxing and you kind of go into autopilot with enough practice. I would say each of these pictures took between 45 minutes to maybe an hour and a half depending on the pose of the hair as well as the amount of detail I chose to put in. But to be honest, when I'm working in this way, time just kind of flies by. I don't realise an hour's passed. I kind of think, oh, just 10 minutes has passed. But I will let you into a bit of a funny secret here. When I go back and edit through these videos and there's hours of footage to go through, it's it's very tedious, but also kind of cathartic at the same time doing it. But the amount of pauses I have where I'm literally just staring off into space, or maybe I'm just looking at something on my phone, is ridiculous. Can anyone else relate to that? The next ink I am featuring is the De La Roni Pro White, and I have featured this a few times on my channel before, just when I've needed to add a few highlights. It's very thick. It's it's. I would say thicker than the Stuart Semple one. With the Stuart Semple one, you can give the bottle a good shake and you're good to go. With the De La Roni one, you, you literally have to shovel it out. It's thick, but it's super concentrated. I'd say it was as opaque as the Stuart Semple, which is pretty opaque, but I would say there's a slight difference in the tone of white. It, it's kind of hard to describe. They're I wouldn't say they were both the same white. I don't know. Maybe I should do a side-by-side -side comparison. I probably should have done that for this video, but I might do in the future. Either way, I don't think it's a massively noticeable difference, but if you've got both, I guess you're gonna notice. I most definitely recommend diluting this. I don't even think you would be able to get a very good level of coverage with a watercolour brush, for example, and I mean a firm one, not a moppy one. It's just going to be difficult to spread it around the page. If you're wanting to do fine lines, you're not going to do that with this ink when it's neat. So bear that in mind. However, on a plus point though, you could view it as it being a concentrated ink and you just have to dilute to taste like you would a cordial, but please don't drink it. 
I did find with this ink that I was having to do a lot of swatches a little bit more on my little piece of black mixing paper there and again that wasn't just down to getting the tone right it was trying to find a nice harmonious balance in achieving a nice fluid motion to the ink as well for want of better words there however once i'd hit the sweet spot for the painting dilution as well as the tone it was just as nice as the other two inks i've spoken about to work with so i can't complain there what I would advise when using these inks is to really, really make sure you've got clean brushes afterwards. And I do recommend just using a hand soap if you haven't got any of the fancy Masters Touch soaps. Hand soap will be fine. Just use a bar, have a dedicated bar for your paint brushes, swirl it in there and really rinse it off until everything comes off that brush clear. And coat with a stained brush, that just happens. But you don't really want to be having crusty old bits of ink and other paint in there whilst you're working on something. Especially if you're using white ink, you want that to be, well, you want it to be white really, you want it to stand out. Also, if you want to try and keep a point on your brush, I would recommend that once you've rinsed it off and you've made sure there's no excess paint in there and it's a tip top clean brush, just run it over your wet bar of soap again and create that point. It should dry, it should hold that point and it'll be ready for when you paint with it next. Just remember to wash that old soap off and you should be good to go. Out of all of the hair paintings, drawings, whichever you want to say it is, out of all of the ones that I have drawn, I would say this was the most difficult one to get my head around and I still enjoyed doing it. But there were certain areas and clusters of fur on there which I had to get my head around and decide which direction they were pointing. These are off some references that I got off the Facebook page, free references, no, free photo references for artists. It's a brilliant group. It's an amazing resource. There are some wonderful photographs and photographers who contribute to that page. The photographer who submitted all of these hair pictures and the picture I do at the end is Diane Hope. And I really, re she, oh my gosh, they're so stunning. I've literally spend a lot of time looking through those photographs and I just can't decide which one to do. It was very hard for me to pick the pictures I did for this little project here because they, they were just beautiful and stunning. Please just go and check it out, show some love. I really find, especially during times when I've got a little bit of art block, I wouldn't say I have really bad art block, but maybe when I just aren't sure what to draw from my imagination, I love a good photo reference. I think it's still a good way to be creative. I think it's a great way to keep harnessing those skills and just keeping your muscle memory alive for certain techniques. I think it really improves your observational skills. And again, if you're just doing it for fun as well, it's kind of like a little puzzle that's been set out in front of you and you've kind of got to figure out where all of those pieces go to make it look a cohesive image at the end of the day. Although still very relaxing, my point was this was a difficult picture to draw, but I still enjoyed it and I still quite liked the outcome. One of the advantages as well for using a brush is getting grass down. Much easier, much more grass-like, I highly recommend it. Those expressive lines can make a difference. So we are on ink number four and this is the Lumi Lumia. As you can see, I've had this for quite a long time and it has not fared well over the years. I bought it about three years ago, used it twice, and then I could not get the thing open. That lid was glued down with the paint. And I'm pretty good with my housekeeping for keeping my materials nice. But I don't know, that just did not want to be opened. So I had to smash the top off and try and decant it into some little dropper bottles, which luckily I'd got on hand. Now, if you thought the Dale Aroni stuff was thick, this was like plaster. And I wouldn't say it was because it had dried out. It hadn't, it had definitely sealed itself up in there. And I, again, store these away where they're not gonna dry out as easily. But this stuff is thick, it's really thick. You could probably do a very tactile piece with it, it's that thick. I really recommend you water it down, absolutely. And the same principle with the Dale Roney. Just keep doing 
your swatches and making sure that your tonal values as well as your flow of ink there is how you want it to be before you commit to your art piece. This ink is super duper opaque again a little like the De La Roni one and I'm pretty sure if you think about it they might kind of be the same actually I think the that De La Roni make this Lumia ink I don't know there's a lot of crusty ink on the bottle and I couldn't check it out. I also noticed that this dries a little bit quicker even when it is diluted so maybe there is a slight difference in formula there. I had considered making some pre-diluted bottles of this ink since I'd got some spare droppers knocking about but again though I can't guarantee for future use if that ink is going to remain stable or not if it's going to just solidify at the bottom and then you're just going to have this layer of water on the top so I decided to just keep them as airtight as possible in those little droppers so if you see me feature them in another video in the future and you're wondering what ink I'm using it's that one and I will refer back to this video as well so hi if you've been referred back to this video and made it this far so I might as well now we're into the video a little bit more tell you my intentions behind this video and some future ones I've got coming up like I mentioned I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to participate in Inktober or not I didn't last year because life's kind of got busy since then you know I have different work pattern now so I don't really have the time to not only just sit and draw all of the prompts for October but edit and get things ready so I think if I do participate in Inktober I'm just going to put the images up on Instagram so be sure to follow me over there it's Katie Riles Art same as on here really and I do occasionally upload other images on there but I think if I'm going to do an Inktober that's where I'm going to send it all so if you want to see what I've been doing by all means check that out but the reason I wanted to do this video, I gotta keep digressing, don't I? I'm terrible. But I wanted to give you guys at least something for Inktober that might help should you decide to go through with it. I want to explore different ink mediums and I guess different types of applications as well as different surfaces to work on. I've got a do and ink tense video coming up and I am going to class that as an ink for Inktober so you know what if you were on the fence about using it for that thinking oh it's a watercolour well it's kind of both and you have my royal permission to do that you should just do what you want anyway but I already had the first set of ink tents from many years ago and I did mention a little while back that I got the second palette set well I'm doing a video at the moment where I'm swatching them out and I have got another five fabulous pictures to share with you on there and I think just talking through the techniques I use and what I think of that medium might just help you to decide which mediums you decide to use. And speaking of different mediums, now the bottles of ink have been put aside and it's time to use our lovely gel pens. Although I guess the as opaque as a gel pen can get and you can go over areas to make it more opaque. The whole approach to this is quite different. The lines that you get from your gel pen are going to be pretty consistent throughout. Obviously you've got different nib sizes, I have them ranging from like the Sakura Jelly Roll 10 right down to the 5 and yeah there is a bit of a noticeable difference there. I also do use other brands here and a preferred one for me anyway is the, um, oh what is it, it's the Unipin ones, love them. I always feel with the Unipin ones you get a good consistent flow of ink and that little ball at the end of the tip of the pen doesn't clog up quite as much. However, that is the nature of gel pens. That's just what happens with them and that's okay. You know what? Sometimes that can add a little something something to your work. I prefer to use bottled inks for more expressive lines. However, I think lots of teeny tiny details with a gel pen is just as effective. It might be a little bit more hard work, but you can still get some gorgeous textures in there and you can really work into it perhaps just a little bit more too. Both applications of using white inks have their pros and cons and I will round that up a little bit later in this video. I do like the fact though that I can really work into this a little bit more and the hair 
pose that I picked was perfect because there was a lot more fur to do on there and I didn't have to rely so much on expressive lines to get highlights and details out. I could just keep working over and over the same area again and it was quite good and very cathartic and therapeutic to do. I was hoping that using the glass dip pen with my bottled inks would allow me to have this advantage of these finer more consistent lines but some things don't work out so using a gel pen in its place is ideal. As you can see the areas I'm working into now I'm adding more pen over and you can see that that's bringing those highlights of the rabbit's fur, well hair's fur, out a little bit more. I've also found as well, and it, it's a little bit weird thinking this, but I can block off areas of white colour with a bit more consistency than with a brush. The ratio of the ink and whatever they dilute it with is going to remain the same throughout all of your mark making, whereas with a brush you are going to have those slight variations with each brush stroke and that's just part of its charm, it's not a bad thing. It's never a bad thing, in fact, it's just an alternative method and sometimes we can do our art pieces to the, to the book and perhaps just not be using our materials in the right way or maybe just not using the right materials sometimes to get that effect. Another reason why I wanted to do this video was I guess to highlight, <laughs> no pun intended there, but I guess to highlight exactly that certain mediums however they're applied are going to look different for your end result and maybe sometimes that's not the result you want but you should never use that as an excuse not to use that medium again and you should use it as a tool for learning and what you can carry on to the next picture with for me whilst i was using the white gel pens i was getting a little bit nostalgic about those scratch art kits that you used to get i think you still can get them now and they'd have a picture of some wildlife on there you'd have like foxes and rabbits and tigers and all sorts of creatures and it'd have a very faint outline of everything and everywhere you had to scratch away and you'd, you'd have this beautiful copper surface underneath it kind of reminds me of doing that but less scratchy and less messy can any of you guys remember using them would you still use them now for me, they'd be like a gift I'd get at Christmas or for my birthday off like one of my relatives or something. And I would proper enjoy using them, even though they were a bit scratchy and messy. Also, whilst I'm on the subject of asking you guys stuff, how many of you are going to do Inktober or other lists out there that other artists and creators have put up for you to try? Let me know down below and let me know what your thoughts are on this year's Inktober. As of recording this video, I haven't seen the list yet, I haven't signed up to the newsletter, but I will take a peek and again, you'll start seeing stuff on Instagram if I've chosen to do it or not. I think taking a bit more of a relaxed approach to this will probably be in better keeping with the spirit of Inktober. It's meant to be fun, you're not meant to put a lot of pressure on yourself to do it, and that's okay. Anyway, I thought to finish off this little sketchbook that I'd made specifically for white ink, after having a selection of hairs, it all seemed right to have a fox pursuing them. A little bit of dark humour there, but I also did want to just draw a fox. For this piece, I'm using a combination of the white gel pens as well as the bottle inks. You could prefer one, you could prefer the other, or maybe you could try them both together and see how that works and enjoy the advantages of both of them. Which brings me up to the conclusion. So, the advantages of the bottled inks and the ones I've featured on here, I do use them regularly. I know there's a few slight differences in the warmth or the coolness of the white, which is what I meant to say earlier. But overall, they all pretty much do the same job that I want them to. But it does have its downsides. There is the housekeeping side of it. It's messy. It's horrible on your brushes if you don't look after your brushes it's messy to clean out of your palette even if you use a ceramic one you're never 100 percent sure if you've removed it you really do have to scrub at it especially if it's dried on rock solid and unless you don't mind testing before every single brush stroke there is that element as well which can be a little bit time consuming if time's an issue there 
for me, it isn't. I kind of enjoy doing it, but perhaps from someone else's perspective, you don't really want to be doing that all the time and you just want to get a painting or a drawing done. However, the pros are with the bottle inks is you can choose your flow of ink as well as the tonal variations there. And I think that is really advantageous for some of the pictures and styles that you could be working with. Gel pens, on the other hand, are quite the opposite and you're going to have fairly consistent lines and depth of tone each time you use them. This could prove costly as well if you're wanting to buy a wide variety of nibs, especially if you're trying to find a brand that you like as well. And there's also the risk of your favourite brand not doing a nib size big enough or small enough for what you want. Another disadvantage is sometimes the ballpoint does clog up and that kind of can mess up your work. Although housekeeping is minimum with this, you're still going to want to make sure that your supplies are working properly before you dive into a picture. However, the really good points are there is less prep work beforehand. Once you've picked out the pen you want to use, you can go ahead and use it straight away. And when you're finished with it, you put the cap on and you're done. Also, I would say it's pretty handy for if you're traveling. I'm not much of a take a sketchbook with me and go places and spontaneously draw. I like to sit down and, I, I don't know, I, ha I have my rituals, so to speak, where I sit down, I have a brew on. So needing portable supplies isn't a massive priority of mine. However, it is kind of handy just to have. They're perfect for perhaps just touching up one or two little mistakes on your regular drawings where you've just used black ink on white paper very subtle way of just removing any little whoopsies on there that you didn't want. And again, if you just want a nice consistent line drawing, they are ideal for that. But of course, for this painting, drawing, both, it is all about using and taking advantage of both of the positive qualities here. It was really nice to get those super fine details in using the gel pens, but then I could also dilute that ink down a little bit more and add some, I wanna say lighter areas, but it's not, it's darker areas because the paint's been watered down. You know what I mean? But to be able to do that and just have that as, I suppose, a nice little enhancement to areas where I perhaps want it lighter but I don't want to do all them little lines in so using them both at the same time is also a really nice experience. Of course though I definitely had to use the brush for the grass that our lovely fox friend is standing on here because that just looks a lot better especially with the different tonal areas. Now I did have to get a black pen out of this I did get a little bit carried away on some areas but hey you know what this is how we rectify making the mistakes you would use a white pen to get rid of any black lines you don't want on your page, so why not use a black pen to get rid of any white lines? Anyway, here's a little run through of all of the pictures. I do hope that this little guide to white inks does help you, especially if you're participating in Inktober and perhaps just fancy doing something a little different. I'd much rather make a video like this, which is gonna help you long term in the future rather than for a month long event and I do hope this helps you guys moving forwards in your artistic endeavours. I really really did enjoy doing this though and I do hope that you have enjoyed watching and it would mean such a lot to me if you dropped a comment down below gave me a thumbs up and if you hadn't already please hit that subscribe button because it really does help me know what kind of videos you like to watch. My favourite hair of the bunch is this one I just kind of like the wild look in its eyes there and I enjoyed painting it too. There should be some more videos on screen that I think you're going to love watching so please be sure to click one of those if you haven't watched one already. I want to say a massive thank you for watching especially if you've made it this far please leave a rabbit down below and I'll see you lovely lot soon. Bye!